Hi all, let's look at another amazing clash between the mighty Stockfish, the highest rated engine in the world, against Leela. Now the first four ply, I should note, in this Chesscom Computer Championship uh, is given uh, as, as the book and I guess they, they, they play each other on opposite colours to make it fair. So the first four ply, the first four half moves, ply is a, a fancy word for half moves, uh, E4, C5, Good so far, but Lila is forced to play e5 <laughs> with a gaping hole on d5. Yes, statistically, yes, this is very good for white. This variation, uh, the strongest, arguably, uh, many people believe knight f6. Yeah, a bit of provocation, for example. This, this, this is arguably the strongest continuation to get the, the pawn uh, forward. This offers a big hole. Yes, so we're at the end of the book, uh, I believe now. So how does Stockfish play this? Bishop c4, I have six. Queen b3, I f7, that's protected. d3, knight c6, bishop g5. Now Lila plays knight a5, which on the surface is an idea to snap this bishop off, which is played, but it kind of reinforces this hole on d5. And the white knights could torture black now on the light squares h6, bishop h6. So we have a situation, Stockfish with uh, the knight pair, the dreaded knight pair, in a closed position. So unless the bishops get open lines, the bishop pair here is pretty subdued. Knight f3, bishop e7, knight bd2, queen e6, queen d3, d6, knight f1. So yeah, the queen supporting c4 makes this possible now, because the queen was eyeing c4, and the knight's just going... Uh, on the fast route to d5 without even bothering castling because then if, if white had castled it's using the f1 square that's a trick from way back from a Steinitz game so accelerated maneuver to d5 here f5 trying to immediately challenge you know white's central control 93 ignoring that just ignoring that so white's got a huge grip on the light squares if white had played E takes this opens up a little bit for the bishop pair and it's an even position technically so knight e3 yeah there's a horrible knight's coming to d5 soon yes is Leela going to get completely destroyed from this position we have queen f7 let's see queen d3 rook b7 it's a bit grovelly Queen h5, but there might be the possibility of something like bishop g4 here. White plays knight d2. The knights are heading for very nice light squares, both of them now. Queen g6, a bit of central pressure, that's reinforced. Bishop g5. Now here, uh, h5, okay, king h8. There's a lot of maneuvering in this game, actually. And compared to other games, the contour of uh, variations actually not too many, um, I believe. There's a lot of shuffling here from this kind of almost looking like a fortress style position. Bishop d8, yeah, it discourages a5 in certain cases. Uh, okay, so h3, queen e6. We have some shuffling, some shuffling, shuffling. And more shuffling till knight g3. The bishop drops back here. Exchange of queens offered, rejected. Queens rejected again to come off. And more shuffling until b4. Now, Lila doesn't want to undouble white's pawns. King g8. a5, trying to lock things in now. Note sometimes this a4 pawn could be a target. So white actually closes here. Stockfish closes the position. Uh, on b takes, it seems mostly harmless as a sample. This kind of continuation you might think is in white's favor, but it seems black can have resources to hold balance even if what seems to be a disaster scenario happens, losing uh, a pawn there. For example here, black is now threatening h4 and, and to weave a mating net. So if white has to play not this because of h4 if yeah this can't be allowed black can't be allowed to play h4 because then yeah bishop g3 and rookie one so so if white has to play h4 here 
this looks to be now even it's dynamically uh, balanced so it seems as though there's no real benefit at least in taking that way and probably the other way either is it's like yeah it seems to be dynamically imbalanced uh, balanced so here there's maximum torture with these knights against the bishop pair so can uh, stockfish break through h4 another it's a committal pawn move and there's always a threat of bishop takes h3 here by the way so king h2 with a purpose there uh, some shuffling again so it, it does seem fairly passive for black the knights seem very impressive but sometimes it's not not all what it like looks like until it starts to get uh a bit scary though round about here when bishop f4 was played this is taking the game into a more committal route however bishop d8 here maybe you know knight e3 if white wants to sort of do something as well so both sides could have changed the direction of the game now so bishop f4 we have queen d1 bishop g3 rook e2 king h7 and some more maneuvering uh yeah so now knight e3 bishop takes e4 yes so the bishop has gone and d6 seems to be an a very awkward backward pawn for stockfish to torture so now knight d5 protects that pawn and hits the rook doubling against the poor backward pawn uh but if you look at this position yeah white can't really go for this pawn uh it's just far too dangerous here and 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 this looks uh extremely uh like a bad idea uh because of bishop f2 check that just looks like an extremely bad idea i mean at minimum you know rook f1 is threatening to mate here so like minimum repeat so i mean there's there's stuff like that going on so it seems as though it's not that easy for white even though b6 is attacked and there's a backward pawn you might think this is a bit crazy how comes but rook b8 yeah it's it seems tactically safe enough uh now an exchange of rooks which changes the course of the game again simplification is this going to be in white's favor rook and pawn ending are all rook and pawn endings drawn rook yeah it looks as though many people convinced e5 might be really dangerous but it's mostly harmless e5 here wasn't played because of king g6 for example e takes and the king just comes back to take out this pawn it's equal position so as actually it seems to be very little point in playing e5 let's look at this again um on rook takes d6 same sort of i mean it's, it's just equal yep so in the game uh, we have king f2 uh, sorry we have king f2 here g5 and yeah this e5 doesn't seem to be a major concern although the evaluations were very strange stockfish was indicating at many points uh sorry there's even a pawn left here for the taking and that's not taken actually let's take a, a deeper look at this casual looking king takes h7 here if rook takes g5 actually rook g8 appears to draw uh it doesn't matter about rook g4 black actually takes here and it doesn't matter how white takes on hg uh black has king h6 as long as it's not a zugzwang for black that's the golden rule here so that will be a uh, not a zugzwang so you know for example here um king here as long as that can be met with that so if there to try and triangulate um so we just we just make sure that there's no triangulation poss possible let's look at the other way uh with f takes you might think there's a frontal attack on f4 instead uh here if king here then we can't do this this would lose because of king f3 zugs bang bang and then that's absolutely winning uh, so what we do here is wait to make sure there's no zugs bang and then here it's equal uh so yeah it's it's totally drawn this this scenario it, it seems to have been casually left but rook g8 is totally uh drawn there for the record the king uh h7 king f1 king g6 and then the king comes over potentially to the center uh and here this pawn is offered 
so a full pawn sack here now this this is getting tricky this configuration e5 might actually be dangerous at this critical juncture uh, if king e6 then there's rook takes g5 and white's going to be much better if rook d7 e5 really works quite well now after d takes uh, here white's got a big advantage winning the rook and here uh, then e takes white has a big advantage because of king e4 here so this is all avoided by a very cunning like gambit of the pawn but no white's extra pawn now after taking there's a double pawn here so it's still kind of balanced on pawns unless there's a zugzwang here uh, so even though Leela's lost the pawn we're again in a situation which seems very fortressy uh, quite often when you're analyzing games of engines even if they give evaluations of plus or even plus two or plus three if it remains constant it doesn't go above that that's often an indication of a virtual fortress so it's not as good as it might seem it's not as winning as it might seem it's if there's no trends basically on the evaluation it's it shows that uh, unless there's a major mistake there's no way of increasing an advantage which often implies a fortress situation and we are in a fortress scenario here and I'm gonna have to put on some Benny Hill background uh, music I'm improvising with my, my own vocals uh, if I do that Uh, okay no until here sorry check uh, what happened bang 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 no I went too quickly there hold on rewind rook b8 okay stockfish actually became keen to avoid the 50 move uh, draw so this is a move 142 plays e5 remarkably and I thought black has been handed some winning chances here but no stockfish is will is is within its table base uh more look up and it's just zero it's just zero uh so even though giving that pawn to avoid the 50 move rule it's not fatal for white to do that now g4 Leela also sacrifices a pawn so yeah some exciting uh incidents here f3 so but rook b8 and now it's again in balance it's again in balance all these checks because uh, if the king tries to step to the queen side uh, king e8 was played here check if the king tries to play king d7 rook f8 and this is going to be good for white uh, this scenario is going to be good for white so yeah Leela's restrained thankfully and doesn't play for a win she hasn't got table base but it's drawn here <laughs> so uh yeah so in a nutshell Leela forced to play e5 against the alipin variation with a massive hole on d5 against the number one rated chess engine in the world still draws it seems stockfish can't beat this young Leela. there's something yeah stylistically going on here Leela does seem a little bit prone to losing with black against some other engines but apparently in the sample size so far uh, not yet so two games with black two games with black drawn three games overall three games all drawn so far with the mighty stockfish so another interesting uh, achievement there okay maybe not the most exciting game in the world but shows even Leela with, Leela with an opening disadvantage a chronic d5 hole can hold it's quite an achievement really comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much